This is a great tool and we see right here, we have complete control of the computer. And if you see on the view, I can change this right now over into graph and you can see the complete control of the computer. I do a right click on this, I select on interact, we are now able to launch processes, executables into the computer. I can enter, say for example, shell, notepad, I hit enter on this. It sends an instruction over the computer here. And when I hit over into the computer, you see notepad is open right now. This is such a great tool. And the even better part, it is open source and it is completely free. You can install it into any of your Linux boxes or your Windows computer and you can start running them. And I'll be showing you how to install it, set it up, and get it up and running for any of the target computers that you want to go after. And of course, to make it look like a real hacking setup, I have Kali Linux running right here. We'll be doing the installation of the server. In the first place, where you'll be downloading this software for yourself is going to be called Havoc Framework. And we'll go over and github.com slash Havoc Framework slash Havoc. So once you're over here, all we need to do is git clone into your Linux machine. The other part is heading over to havelockframework.com slash docs slash welcome. And this is the place we'll be going into to learn how to install it. So just follow the instructions, it's really simple. So I click under installation. So right here, all we gotta do is do a git clone. So I'll copy this, hit over into terminal, paste it right here, git clone, https, github.com slash framework slash havoc.git. Hit enter on that. It already exists, and all I gotta do is to overwrite on it. So what I'll do is go ahead and remove it. So enter remove dash RF followed by havoc. Hit enter on that, so it's removing the directory. And now I can go ahead and run the command again, git clone, and it's cloning into the havoc directory. So you can see right here, we're receiving the objects. We are looking at the download in a couple of seconds. And once we're done with that, all we gotta do is hit over into havoc. So we just follow the documentation on the instructions. So install the dependency. So right over here, we have the following. So we have Kali and other Debian based distros only, or if you're on Ubuntu, or if you're on Debian 10 slash 11 and so on, you just follow the instructions right here. And same thing, you can also do the same for Mac OS, Arch based distros. So all I gotta do right now is to copy the following here over here, copy, hit back to terminal and paste it right here, hit enter on that, enter my password. So right now we're installing it and it's done. All right, so I already have all the dependency installed earlier and for yourself, it may take a few minutes for you to complete the download. Next up, we need to go ahead and build the team server. So we'll CD over into team server, go mod download golang.org slash access, as well as the following. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So CD over into team server, and you can see right here, all I gotta do is copy the following of GoMod download, paste it right here, hit enter on that, and likewise for the second one, copy, paste it over here, hit enter on that once again. Next up, what we'll be doing is to do the install, compile and build binary. So let's go back over into the following, I'll clear around this, I'll paste it right here, hit enter on that, building the team server. And if you notice, there's going to be a specific file with the extension on dot YAOTL, and that is going to be the one for us to build and run. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, you wanna see over here, we have the following, run the team server. All right, so the file that will be doing some changes over here, particularly for the user login, is going to be stored in this havoc.yaotl file. Okay, perfect. It is now done building the team server. And what we need to do right now, if you see over here on the Nick instruction is run the team server, which is dot slash havoc server, dash dash profile, dot slash profiles havoc dot y a o t well so this is the one that we're targeting so hit over cd into profiles and once we're here i can enter ls i can see the file here called cat have all tl hit enter on that and this is the place where we're setting the username and password so in this case we got a couple of users so i want to change the user or the operator's login so all i got to do is say enter the following is zip the vim have all dot y a o t l hit enter on that and i'll go over here and change the user, so in this case, I enter Hackaloy. I'll give the password, I like the password. The password looks pretty good. And of course, as well as my buddy, script kitty loy. So once we're done with that, I do a right quit. So we are done. I'll CD back and I can now run 
the command that they've given us. So copy this, all right, hit back over here into the root of Havoc directory, hit enter on that, and now we're running. It's all good to go. The next thing we want to do now is to build the client so that we can access the server. So all I got to do is, this is pretty straightforward, make client build followed by dot slash have up client. So let's go ahead and copy this over here, hit back over into the directory, open up a new terminal, and with the terminal, I'll go over into Havoc directory, ls, paste it over here, make client build. Okay, you can see the following right here. Cloning into some module. Okay, we're done building up the client. So this took a couple more minutes. And you can see right here, we have the following, and they give you a percentage of how long it took to complete the client build. So once you're ready, all you got to do is enter the following dot slash havoc, followed by client, hit enter on that, and you can see a pop-up coming up over here, and we can give it a name. So let's give this new profile a name. So let's call it Loy Session, and the host will be 127.0.01. And of course, in this case, our port number, let me just hit over into the earlier terminal, and we have a port number, which is 40056. This will be the port number that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and enter on that. So let me hit over into that console, which is going to be this one over here. So port is 40056. And the username in this case, we have HackerLoy, as well as the password of password1234. So go ahead and click connect and you will see a wonderful pop-up right here. And this is going to be the console that we will be using. However, the font size is pretty small and I'm gonna change this before we continue with the tutorial. So I'll close this here. I'll head back over into terminal. So what I'll do now is CD over into the following of client, enter ls, clear. So I can do a cat on config.toml so what I will do now is change the font size. So sudo vim config.toml, enter the password for Kali. Oops, this is not the one. So let me just clear on this again. So sudo vim config.toml, this is the one. All right, so let me go ahead and change the size to 11. Hopefully that makes the text much more visible. So let's go ahead and do a dot slash again. CD, all right, so let's go ahead and dot slash havoc followed by client. So now we're loading right in. Okay, the text is a lot better. Let's go ahead and click connect. Now let's see what we get. Okay, this is a lot more visible. So once we are here, this is the navigation area, all right? On the left, the top left corner, this is the place where all the devices are. On the right side, this is the things are happening across your havoc framework. And of course, on the bottom, half of this console is going to be all the different tabs that you have in terms of issuing shells, issuing controls or commands over into target devices. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up a listener. Yes, the team server is running, the client's running, and we need to listen so that we can execute on a client device that can then connect over to the server and the server can now control the device. All right, so this is what we call a listener and we have several support protocols here. We have HTTP, HTTPS, SMB, and external C2. So these are the options that's available for you to set up. Now heading back over to the client, all I have to do is go to the top left corner, click under view, click under listeners, and you'll see a tab open right here and at the bottom, click on to add. You click on the add right here, let's call this HTTP and I'll use a simple payload in our case, HTTP, and we have the direct entry or input of the IP address of Kali Linux. So in our case, our IP address of Kali Linux is 192.168.0.105, and we have the port bind. So in this case, I'm gonna change the port binds to perhaps, say 8011, all right, port connection 8011, we have user agent information and so on and so forth. So I'm ready. I am good to go. I'll go ahead and click save on this, all right, and it has started the listener for us. So you can see right here, we have the listener information. All right, we have the host, the port bind, and pod connection. Now that we are ready, all we need to do is to provide an executable to the client device so that when they enter, execute on it, we gain the remote control functionality. So this is the part what we call as an agent. All right, so you can see over here, we go into the payload generation window, attack payload, and we configure the daemon payload. So let's head back over into the client, go over into the top 
left corner, you can see right here we have attack payload, select onto that, and then we have the listener HTTP, architecture x64 Windows executable, where I have all this different information right here that you can set. I'll click on the generate, it's compiling the source, and once it is ready, we can save it into a specific directory, host it to say a web server, and then allow the client device to download on that, that will give us remote control of the computer. Once the executable is ready, there'll be a pop-up to ask you on where you wanna save this. So I'll hit over here, and we can see, for example, I have the Havoc directory. So I'll go over and to say, I'll create a new directory, I'll call it payload, create, and I'll save it right here. Okay, so we've now saved it over into the home Kali Havoc payload daemon.x64.exe, click OK on that, we're done. So all we need to do is serve it over to target computer, execute on it, and we're good to go. So now let's head over to the directory to host this file. So I'll go over and cd into Havoc, cd over into payload, and I can use, say, for example, python3 http.server followed by port 8000, hit enter on that, and now we're serving through this python3 http server. So we just move over into Windows target computer, execute on it. So here we are, this is the target device. All I gotta do is enter, say the IP address in this case, 192.168.0.105, port 8000, hit enter on that. And we have a specific file right here, click onto it. Click, let's say save as, I'll save it over into say desktop, click save, and then go ahead and click run, click more info, click run anyway and it is good to go, it's running right now. So if I head back over into Kali Linux, you can see right here, of course, this is the Python 3 HTTP server, so it's just demonstrating that someone came in and downloaded, and I've hit over into the client, I can see here, we have it. This is in, it is game over, we have full remote control of the entire device. And to demonstrate so, I can do a right click onto it and click over into Interact, and over here on the interact, all I gotta do is say, for example, enter pwd, print working directory, to get a current working directory, and it says the following, right? C uses Loy Leung Young desktop. And I can say, for example, dir, and it will show us the current directory and all of the files within it, so we can see all of the files right here. And I can enter help as well, and help will show us all the list of instructions or commands that we can send over into the target device to run all these different types of remote connection and control. Now, there are a lot of super cool commands that we can issue. And in this case, for example, I can enter, say, help, and we have several instructions here. And the one that I want to use is going to be screenshot. I hit enter on this, and you see the following. Task the daemon to take a screenshot, send task to agent 12 bytes, successful took screenshot. So if you go to top, left corner, you click under view, you click under loot, and you can see right here, we have a new download, okay? And you can see on the right side, this is the loot for us. This is the screenshot of what's happening inside the user's computer, so this is super cool. I am also able to download things from the target device. So for example, over here, I can enter the following of DIR, which is to list the current directory, and there may be some interesting files. So in this case, perhaps I look at this file like hackerloy.jpg. So let's go and enter the following of download, hackerloy.jpg, hit enter on that. And right here, okay, the daemon is downloading the file, it's completed the download, and I hit over into data, and I go under loot, I can see over here there's a timestamp, there's an agent, so we we'll select onto the agent that we have here, go over and download, so it gives us the directory of things, so I have users, Lloyd Van Young, desktop, and right here we have hackerloy.jpg, I double click onto it, we're able to open up the image, open up the downloaded file. And the best part, if you want to know, you want to have a network map of graph of what's going on, you just hold over into the following of view, session view, and change these to graph. And you can see right here, this is a simple way to you to visualize all of the devices that you remotely control over into. The other super easy navigation, just doing a right click on the device, on the explorer, we can both look at file explorer as well as process list. So let's go ahead and select on the file explorer over here. You can see right here, we are gathering 
information about the directory as well as all the files and further folders within it. So you can see the C drive, I can double click onto it and we can also navigate it through the list over here. So I go into C drive, I hit enter on that and it will show us all of the files and folders available inside this computer. So extremely easy to use. This is a wonderful remote control software. So use it, let me know how it goes.